to go. Fantastic. Yay. Yay. Okay, and now I'm going to turn off the comments so that you don't have text on your face. Great. And can That's, you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Julia, I'm so excited to talk about this. You know I've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while. We get a, I know. Lot, of, a lot of questions. So before we get started, please share a little bit about yourself and who you are, where you are, where you live, and what you do. Yeah. Uh, my name is Julia Feldman. I'm a, a sex ed consultant. I live in Oakland, California. I work with all different ages and populations around sexual health from preschoolers learning to identify parts of their body and assert their bodily autonomy to um, parents learning how to work with their children to teachers training them how to teach to breast cancer survivors and doctors and hospitals. Um, the reality is that none of us were really taught how to communicate about our bodies and how our bodies work. And we all need support in that area. So I yes. love working with everyone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. So if you guys haven't looked at her account, it's giving the talk. It's an amazing account. I learned something from every single post. And I really also like the energy and vibe that you have. It's very open and accepting and uh, really teaches some great communication strategies. So oh, I appreciate so it. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're definitely my go-to when I don't have an answer i'm like hey go check out her account to see Thank what you, you can find out <laughs> yes, <I'm flattered>. yes. <laughs> all right so let's jump into these questions i don't know if we'll get through all of them but we'll do the best that we can and uh we might need to schedule this again sometime I'm game. let's do it <laughs> all right okay so what's a good age when do we start talking and and how do we start what I'm That's sure a there's question. a framework. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and so the exciting thing that I can tell you is that you are talking about this stuff, whether or not you realize it or not. And the best okay. age to start is at birth. And okay. the talk changes completely throughout the person's life cycle and different ages and stages of development. Um, I will admit that the name of my business is a bit misleading because it's giving <laughs> the talk. And the reality is that there are it's not of one. thousands of talks, not one talk. <laughs> Uh, I hate to break it to you. Sometimes people get upset. They're like, really? I, have to I just one. wanted to say it once. Um, exactly. Um, but the reality is that you're constantly giving the talk if you're a parent or you work with young children. Because the reality is, from the time they're born, if you are teaching them um, the different parts of their body, if you're teaching them the difference between public versus private and not to expose themselves in public, if you're teaching them about what love and affection really feels like and healthy communication, these are all aspects of the talk that you're doing. So at different ages, it looks different. Um, if you're familiar with the Rye method of parenting or about just different types of involved parenting that people are doing now with babies, there's a very common philosophy about um, narrating as you change a baby's diaper. You know, like I'm okay. opening up your diaper, I'm wiping your penis, I'm wiping your testicles, okay. I'm wiping your vulva. And so just the idea of like including this type of vocabulary uh -huh. from the very start and normalizing it is really the best thing that we can do because if you wait until they're, you know, a teenager and you suddenly start using this terminology, they're going to be taken back and they're not going to be comfortable <laughs> and you're not going to be comfortable, right? So right. part of it's about practice and just normalizing bodies and sexuality. Yes. Part of it is um, about creating and establishing that relationship so that your young person knows that they can talk with you about whatever they need to. Um, and a large part of it is just getting comfortable with using the terminology yourself and talking about this stuff in a way that sheds the shame and stigma that a lot of us have been taught because, yes. you know, we are all steeped in this culture that doesn't know how to navigate this stuff well. And yes. a lot of us just replicate the patterns that we were raised with and our parents probably did the best that they could and we can do better. And so there's yeah. no reason not to do better. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, in especially some of the first pelvic floor classes, you know, mm -hmm. as we go through our training, that's yeah. part of it. Like, okay, say vagina, vagina, vagina yeah. you know, or whatever the anatomy is, you know, practicing, getting very comfortable with oh, saying yeah. these words, because if you're not comfortable with it, how on earth are your children going to do exactly. that, right? And I, I can always tell I've done a good job when I'm teaching puberty ed, because I'll come in on the first day and the kids will just be appalled. And by the last day, they're working with posters, and you'll hear one boy say, oh, no, that's not the clitoris. You know, like, that's the vulva. And like, that's the anus. That's the perineum. You know, and just seeing that, yes. you know, they have that facility with language because they have that with their nose and their ears and their yeah. lips, you know, like, and there would be no shame about that. But suddenly you're talking about another part of your body, and there's just so much um, shame and embarrassment to cut through. And so mm -hmm. the more we can start at the beginning and just 
make it normal. Oh, have you washed your testicles? You're like, oh, here's here's some soap. You know, like you can just integrate it into everyday conversation. The yeah. um, the less of a deal it is. Right. Okay. So that's the anatomy part. Mm -hmm. Then what about what the body parts do? Yeah, that's a good. So question. also at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, they, they do different things at different ages, right? Yeah, they do. Um, you know, if you're talking about a penis or a vulva, there's lots of different things they can do. But when they're a baby, it's primarily for urination. Bowel and bladder, yep. And, you know, <laughs> and we're talking about defecation and all those things. Um, but there also is a pleasure element as well, and that shouldn't be denied. The important thing about acknowledging, you know, the fact that we have ultrasound footage of fetuses touching themselves in the womb for pleasure. You know, like this is a thing that is completely normal. It feels you good. Have, it feels good. And it should. You're wired to make it feel good. With these little nerve endings. Exactly. Yes. Our body rewards us with pleasure for stimulating parts of our body. And as we get older, we need to make sense of that. And that's one of the great things that parents can do to guide. But when you have a baby, you're going to see them play with their genitals. And, you know, a great thing to say is like, oh, yeah, that feels good, doesn't it? You know, like, and let them do it in their own space. And as they get older, you know, that narration around, like, that's a wonderful thing that you get to do for yourself. And we do that in private, just like we go potty in private, you know. And the reality is good. that public versus private is a really challenging thing to talk about, especially with yes. young children. If you've ever potty trained a child, you're going to tell them to pee in the middle of the park in front of everyone. In the oh, of the my party, goodness. Right? I have a quick little story to interject. Yeah. So we live on Texas, and we grew up on a ranch. And so my first child is a boy, and so that's where he learned. He would just whip it out and go on a tree or whatever. There and then go. I think he's about three probably, and we're in the mall, uh -huh. and trees are in the mall. They have these potted trees, and I turn my head, and there he is. Exactly. Just, you know, and that was normal for him. And I was exactly. mortified, but you know, it wasn't a discipline issue at all. It was just no. like, ah! yeah, it's, ah! it's one of those, what? as a parent, you realize you have to teach everything yeah. and there's nuances yeah. to everything too. Yeah. You're like, so he was doing exactly what he did. Exactly. Taught, exactly. You know? Pee on so a tree. Yeah. I have parents that tell me like, you know, my kid is exposing themselves in public and he, you know, I'm like, how old is he? Like, Oh, he's two. I'm like, oh, did you just potty train him? Yeah. Did you pull out the potty in the middle of the park and tell him to poop in it? Yeah. And now you're <laughs> puzzled that he's touching himself in public? Like, we haven't modeled and established what public versus private looks like. So for the, to expect them to be able to internalize that immediately, it's a process. You know? mm -hmm. um, and for our ease, we make them, you know, go in public because, you know, you want them to have the potty immediately. But we also need to understand that with that kind of communication comes confusion around those things. Yeah, there's some exactly. repercussions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so what your body can do is something that, you know, we don't need to hide the fact that bodies can be pleasurable and that they can be a wonderful source of comfort and relaxation. That's the thing that a lot of people use their bodies for. We just need to explain an appropriate context for it and be consistent with that. Um, right. And then the question around sex, like when do you talk yes. to about sex, you know? Yes. You'll have uh, three and four-year-olds asking you, you know, um, where do babies come from? Yeah. And when they're asking you, where do babies come from? It's the same as That's asking great. you, like, where do popsicles come from? You know, like, <laughs> they don't, they don't want to know yeah. anything about sex. Yeah. They want to know, like, yeah. somehow I wasn't here before, and now I am, <laughs> and how did that happen? Yeah, or um, I now have this little baby next to me, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Where did Mommy they come from? Mm -hmm. Did you get them at the store, like, that turkey? <laughs> you know, like, you have to have that explanation. So, uh -huh. um, so for different ages, it looks different. When you're talking with younger kids, like, um, or that are, like, three to five, there's um, really great books that can kind of outline the different stages of development, like what makes a baby. And that really just talks about cells coming in contact with other cells that can happen in lots of different ways. So it's inclusive of all different types of families. Um, and it um, explains like how these cells come together and grow and develop. And then eventually uh, a baby is born. Um, and so that's like a really great explanation from the beginning, just talking about how there's all these different pieces that come together and they come together from the different parents or the different cells that contribute to the family, to that baby. Um, and then as they get older, the conversation changes. You know, when they're between eight and 10, the conversation can be more about um, connection and safety and relationships and how to show respect and care for other people. And as they get more into middle school, the conversation is gonna be about anatomy and about vulnerability and about trusting people and about safety and, um, and about different types of risks that can be present and how to um, connect with your inner voice and trust yourself and connect with what you really want and communicate that to other people. Um, so the talk looks different. I would say you should never sit your kid down for the first time and say, like, 
a penis goes in a vagina and that's how a baby is made. Like that just doesn't provide the context. You know, if you yeah. take a step back and you think, well, why am I having this conversation with my child? You're having it to convey your values about intimacy and your expectations and hopes for their intimate future. You're talking about safety, emotional safety, physical safety, psychological safety, and making sure that you're helping them cultivate an understanding that's going to be consistent with your hopes for them. Um, and then you're wanting to answer whatever questions they have. And that's really the kind of the crux of all these conversations is that you want to simultaneously let your child lead while also creating opportunities to show that you are the supportive person that they can turn to for those mm -hmm. things. So it's kind of following their lead, but also consistently showing that you're open to having conversations. You want to provide them with information. There's nothing to be ashamed of that you have this knowledge and you want to share it. Um, so it's really about being available and conveying that. And that happens in all different respects, whether you're talking about arguments with friends or music that you're listening to on the radio or any sort of conflict that might arise. It's just about being really present as a parent. That is beautiful. So resources, where can parents, so you gave, you gave some fabulous tips. Yeah. Where can parents go? Like I, I'm very much of a spreadsheet. I like check off lists. Like, is yeah. there a website or a book yeah. that kind of there's, summarizes things? I would say there's a lot of great books. Sex Positive Parenting has great resources and guides outlining different ages and stages. Okay. Um, and that's a website? Um, Sex Positive or Parenting is a great account on Instagram okay. and a great okay. website. Um, so absolutely check that great. out. Okay. Um, let's see what else in terms of resources. I saw one of the questions was about what's taught in public school. Yes. That's a great question. And I what is? Exactly and I'm sure that. it varies some based varies on the state and where you are. <laughs> the, the requirements vary state by state um, with everything from California leading the way with requiring comprehensive, inclusive sexuality education to other states that don't require anything or require abstinence only or abstinence <laughs> plus. Um, which we know from all of the data doesn't actually do anything to help people's health. Um, so there's wide variations. But one resource I'd recommend people check out is the National Sexuality Education Standards. And if you okay. search National Sexuality okay. Education Standards, which is long, um, yes. you'll get a great PDF document that was created by a consortium of wonderful oh. sex education organizations. Um, and it's basically like the gold standard for what should be taught from okay. kindergarten through grade 12. And for parents, it's a really useful resource because it kind of shows knowledge and skills that are developmentally appropriate. Yeah. So if you have a kindergartner and you're like, what should I be talking <laughs> with a kid that is? Right. Oh, kind of I love everything. that. You know, and most of these, I mean, I don't know of any sex ed program that actually teaches all these things, but it's such a useful tool to kind of mm -hmm. see like, what do professionals think is an appropriate thing for them to learn at this stage and to what level of sophistication and complexity? And so that's a, a really helpful tool as well. So National Sexuality Education Standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will, when, also, once we're done, I'll Google it and I'll put a link in my story too. Excellent. So mm -hmm, yeah. that's fabulous. Okay. So then let's see in terms of foster kids. So I have foster yeah. kids. Does that vary? How, what does that conversation look like? Yeah. And we know that they might be temporary or they might be longer term. Yeah. It also depends on the age of the foster yeah. children as well. And I, I'd say that one of the most important aspects of this type of work in communicating with your children about this is about establishing comfort and safety. And so I'd say as a foster parent, probably the most important thing to initiate is just um, a communicative, open relationship where you show that you are available to respond and answer to questions, answer questions. You want to use the language that you think is appropriate and empowering. And I encourage people to use anatomically, scientifically correct terms from the beginning. And I would, as a foster parent, continue to do that just to integrate it into my vocabulary. But I'd say Fostering those types of relationships where you can talk about intimate things or vulnerable things would be the first thing to really work on as a foster parent before diving into deeper conversations about sexuality. Um, and a lot of that's just because these are the talks that we have with people that we feel safe with and that we trust. And so we want to establish that safety and trust first so that the talk feels safe. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Okay. So uh, next topic here, warning signs of abuse. So we're kind of a little bit off topic, yeah. but very important. Very important. Um, I'd say that when you're talking about warning signs of abuse, um, generally, especially with young children, um, showing knowledge of different types of sexual acts or language that you haven't seen them exposed to in any specific okay. way are really the initial signs. 
if they're talking about their body parts in a way that seems high, highly sexualized, or if they are um, initiating or, um, or um, playing with other children in ways that seem highly sexualized that are beyond what you um, have seen them do before or seems age appropriate, those would be the initial signs that I would look for. Um, also, kind of after long conversations about the difference between public versus private, still not really being able to fully internalize that might be something to look into as well. But mostly it's about highly sexualized behavior that seems um, far more advanced than a child's mm -hmm. years. Those okay. are kind of the initial signs that you look mm -hmm. for. So we're going to jump back to public versus private and yes. how we refer to yeah. anatomical anatomy, right? So yeah. is there a difference in public? What are your recommendations? Because I can see maybe I don't want my four-year-old yelling, mom, my penis hurts, or, you know, yeah. you know I, I don't know. But I, I maybe I'm also a little more conservative, too, so I'd love yeah. to hear what you think about that. Yeah. Um, obviously, each person has their own level of comfort, so I can't tell people what to be comfortable with. Yeah. But I would say that there's no reason that we should be using euphemisms for any part of our body. Um, and if you, you know, when I... I have a four-year-old now when I first was nursing and was communicating about um, language. I use the term breasts, you know, like that's mama's breasts. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and my kiddo started calling them babus. <laughs> and, <to laughs> not get breasts, and babu just became the term that we use. And uh, there was a certain point where I was really thankful for that being in public when my kiddo right. was screaming, babus, babus. <laughs> um, that, you know, for the most part. Yeah. There's a short window of time where a kid would just be screaming penis in public. Right. And mostly it would come up like in a public restroom. And I think then in a restroom, it's totally appropriate right. to use the yes. language of genitals. Um, so I'd say for the most part, reinforcing uh, scientifically or anatomically correct language mm -hmm. is a great practice at all times. Um, the reason we use euphemisms is because of shame, right? We've been taught that there's something dirty or wrong about a penis or a vulva or a vagina that, you know, necessitates using um, a euphemism. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of really begin to shed that idea and accept the fact that there's nothing wrong <laughs> with a penis right. or the vulva, and that that's just another part of our body, just like, oh, my ear hurts, oh, my penis hurts, you know, yes. um, and, and just having those conversations, then we can start to get rid of that shame. I think mm -hmm. that's just another way. And make it less it. taboo. I mean, exactly. and that's what we're trying to do with pelvic health. So I don't know. Yeah. You, we're, yeah. just, we're normalizing we're, very normal things. You know, it's I think it's okay that's to say the word prolapse and exactly. leakage and all these things. Yep. These are things that bodies do. We talk about sprained ankles in public all the time. Why can't we talk about prolapse? You know, like why mm -hmm. can't we talk mm -hmm. about our belly buttons with kids all the time? Why can't we talk about our butts? You know, like, yep. Yep. these are just parts of our body. There's no reason that we should need to, um, to mask them or try mm -hmm. to um, um, sanitize them. They're not yep. dirty. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we're going to phase into this these questions about at what age should opposite genders be separated at bath times, like siblings? Yeah, I'd say that for all of those issues around nudity around your kids, when should you stop, you know, walking around naked in front of them uh -huh. at bath time? Uh -huh. You follow their cues. I think a lot of parents decide that, oh, well, you know, like they're starting to stimulate themselves for pleasure, so they need to have all, you know, so suddenly we need to be a fully clothed household at all times. Say, <laughs> That's not true, right? If your kids are comfortable taking a bath together, there's no reason that they can't do that. Nudity isn't an inherently sexual thing. And that's another thing that we need to kind of like check ourselves on. You know, I think okay. a lot of we're probably uncomfortable to see a pelvic PT because, yeah. you know, there's Yeah, what do I, I have to show them what? Exactly. <laughs> they might touch me where, you know, like, and yep. the reality is that, like, these are parts of our bodies. Do doctors examine them when they need help, right? Yeah. You, you, yeah. Would, you go to a podiatrist, you're not going to be uncomfortable with them touching your feet. Probably. Right. We um, want them. We want help. Exactly. <laughs> so these parts of our bodies that might have sexual functions are not only for sex. And the fact that um, you're in a bathtub with a sibling and they have genitals and you have genitals doesn't mean that that has to come into play at all. Now, if your mm -hmm. child is consistently getting erections in the bathtub and that makes you uncomfortable or they're stimulating themselves, then that might be an appropriate time for them to not bathe together anymore. Um, but if there is an inherently sexual behavior going on and they're not articulating any discomfort with it, there's no reason that you should initiate discomfort with it. Does okay. that make sense? So really, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. follow your kids, follow their yeah. kids. If they're not comfortable, respect that and, and modify your behavior. But there's no reason that um, you should do that if it's not making anyone uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's not harmful. 
not harmful. So, so how, how late would that go? So would we go into puberty? I think it depends on the siblings okay. or the parents, you know, mm -hmm. it's really about following your lead. Again, there's nothing harmful about being around other naked bodies. Yeah. You know, and no. there's nothing inherently sexual. And around sexual, people. right. It doesn't, you know, um, but if I would say that generally when people enter puberty, there's a level of self-awareness around their own body that might make them uncomfortable about being around other people and to check in with your kids about their comfort level with their body and, yeah. and to really make sure that you're honoring their comfort and their needs, but not to anticipate that that's going to be an issue or, or act preventatively um, in a way that might hypersexualize them or might, you know, make it an issue where it isn't one. Yeah, where it might make them uh, con self-conscious about it. Exactly. Like you're introducing, you're leading the witness. <laughs> exactly. You're leading the witness into <laughs> sexual territory. They don't, they don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, okay, so we talked about some resources for parents. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you say for kids if they, you know, so, right, we want, we yeah. I don't even have to finish that sentence. What resources well, for kids would you I recommend? Mean, for me, it's books. There's a okay. lot of great resources online, and there's some great videos as well. There's an organization called amaze.org that does okay. some wonderful educational videos for young children and teens and parents as well. Um, but I am a big believer in books because yes. the amazing thing about a book is that you just put it on the shelf. And when they're ready for it, they're going to find that book and they're going to read it. And Good. when you notice that the book has been moved, that's a great time to yes. open up that book with your kid and start having those conversations. But I Good. think that having available, reliable, useful information at their fingertips for them to access when they're ready is by far the best strategy. Okay. Um, so then some, some recommendations on books. Would Amaze, is it A-M-A-Z-E? A-M-A-Z-E. -E. It's Do wonderful they have for videos. Videos, books, okay. Um, the um, sex I positive... Have, Parent Positive Parenting is a great okay. reading list. I have a reading list that I've uh, wrote and published through Mother Mag that um, I have linked on my website. Okay, and um, that's givingthetalk.com? Givingthetalk.com, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, Sex Positive Parenting also has a great reading list. Um, there's a few classics, um, uh, like It's So Amazing, which is just a wonderful text that just um, with really cute little cartoon characters that use the scientifically correct terminology and is really comprehensive. Um, there's no reason that the information has to be scary or come in a very clinical way. Um, it's, it's a really sweet thing to introduce topics about body and intimacy with cute cartoon characters and conversations with your kids. And books are just a wonderful way to facilitate that. That's incredible. Look, we've gotten through all of the questions. So Yay! is there any, I know, that's fabulous. It's not rocket science. Not. No, you've, you're a great, great resource. Tell me a little bit about, so for you and your business, like mm -hmm. if people wanted you to come to their parenting group or to yeah. their group, do, are, do you do that? Tell me a little bit more about how people can connect with you. Yeah, you know, I work in lots of different capacities. I've had parents who have really not wanted to have the talk with their kids for whatever reason, and I come and do series with small groups of, of teenagers and, and preteens. Um, and we just talk about these topics together. Um, I do Tupperware party style parties with, <laughs> with parents where we, yes. we, have, we have some wine and we talk about how to have the talk. Um, I contract with schools and train teachers and write curriculum. I come in and I'm that lady with um, the condoms that does it all. Uh, I've got the best posters, I assure you. Yes. Um, my vulva poster is very popular. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the exciting work I've been doing has been with physicians lately. There's a lot of um, doctors that don't really, I mean, in my understanding is in medical school, there's very little training around sexuality. Um, so especially lately, I've been working with oncologists who work with um, people undergoing treatment for breast cancer, because there's a lot of potential implications in terms of your sexuality yes. for breast cancer treatment. And a lot of doctors don't really know how to navigate that. So working yes. with them and working with their clients about, you know, these are the changes that have under you've, you've undergone, right? Is, you know, you still are a sexual being. Let's talk about how to move forward. And I'm sure a lot of the tools that we talk about are tools that you talk about with your, yeah. your patients. There's a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah. So uh, yeah, work in schools, or just okay. a lot of different capacities. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly shocked by the demand for information from all different populations. I've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of preschools lately asking me, you know, to I come in and talk to their kids because it's so stuff. important. It's everyone, so important. It, whether it's a private or a public school, everyone, everyone needs this. Yeah. So 
Good. I'm so I'm glad that you're busy, and I hope that you stay busy. <laughs> I you. love your account. Keep creating the amazing content that you are. And if people had a question, is it okay for them to DM you, direct yeah, message you, you on know, Instagram? I get, a, or... I get a lot of DMs. My policies okay. around DMs are: if you have an account that has no posts or no followers, I'm not going to respond to you because, in yeah. my experience, those That's accounts weird. are created to harass. Yeah, um, those are weird. I get a lot of I get a lot of harassing DMs. And so I'm going to say if you have okay. a question, contact me. I'm happy to answer it. If you have a complex question, I um, have just started booking office hours so people can book 20 or 50 minute chunks of time. And nice. that's been wonderful. I've had a lot Is of that online to virtual? Yeah, it's all through my oh, website. Oh, yes. Yeah. You can just book online directly through my website. Um, okay. But yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of times when we just need to talk different ideas through you know maybe you have young kids or you have questions or concerns about your own your own experience and you're not really sure who to talk to um and i make it really clear that i'm not a therapist and i'm not a physician but i'm very knowledgeable and i can give you a lot of information and honestly a lot of the questions i get are things like you know does size really matter and yeah. you know yeah. have and yeah um and do i master validating you know? yeah validating people in their experience yeah, i would imagine exactly mm -hmm. and um yeah the most common questions i get are questions that i call the am i normal questions which is just i have a sexuality and i've never really been taught anything about it other than it's problematic and are these things normal and the reality is yes most things are normal and they're not things that we should feel ashamed about but i love answering beautiful. people's questions beautiful. when they're respectful okay. <laughs> yes 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 i totally understand so uh go to your website and do you have a contact me maybe on the website like a that might be yep. the best okay. i am easy to get to. <laughs> okay good deal good deal well i'm happy to know that you offered the online sessions i thank you so much for all of your great information is there anything else that you'd like to share with people before we close um, let's see that I'd like to share with people. I mean, I think that I'm so appreciative of the work that you do and the information that you share. Thank and you. one of the things that in my sessions, especially with men that comes up a lot is the fact that your pelvic floor is such an important part of your health and yeah. the way that you experience your sexuality. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just really grateful to you for the work that you do. Great. And, and I think that Thank the more you. we can support people and educate them about yep. just, you know, we need to know how bodies work and yes. how to care for ourselves. Yes. You know, this is yes. not secretive you no. know um this is not top secret this we are on the same page everyone. sister yeah. <laughs> yes i love <laughs> it all right well thank you so much for your time today everybody oh, check pleasure. her out givingthetalk.com and then also at giving the talk on instagram this video will be on youtube my pelvic floor muscles no spaces <laughs> everybody have a great day and thanks again julia for your time oh thank you so much for having me okay take care bye-bye okay. bye, -bye. bye.